in Aggie land. We'd like to open it up for just a few questions. This is not something that will run incredibly long, but we'd like a chance to have some aside interviews for two or three of you at a time. And Ross had a lot of folks he was saying hello to in there as well. And I think that you'll find it to be uh, very um, helpful when it comes to any questions you have. So let's open it up in general and uh, get going. Gabe? Yeah, Ross, Gabe Bach with Tech Sags. I wonder if you could tell us just how important it is as an athletic director to be present, to be involved, to be out there in the community at events and sporting events. And of course, you're very active on social media as well. <clears throat> well, I think the, the main people that need to be the face of the program are the student athletes and our coaches. However, you do need steady, stable leadership, I think, uh, as the athletic director. So wherever I can provide value, whether that's showing up to a swim meet or a football game or basketball game or a donor event, you know, I want to be there. I want to be actively involved in everything that we do. You know, this is, a, this is not an eight to five job. This is a lifestyle. And so you'll see my family at events. And, and I think having that presence, I think, just builds confidence among your fans and your supporters. And that's what we'll try to do. Daryl? Ross, Daryl Bruffett with KBTX here in town. How beneficial is it for Texas A&M for you to come in here as a, an SEC AD from the West that knows the lay of the land that can, you know, you're not having to figure things out? Well, you know, I don't have uh, Matt Luke's uh, playbook. I don't have that. Um, but, you know, I, I do think it's important. I, I think the, the respect and camaraderie around the table of athletic directors that there's a relationship that you have to know kind of where people are coming from if they bring certain legislation up or whatever the, the, the conversation is. I think having, you know, Commissioner Sankey and having a built-in relationship there, I think having connections with the NCAA staff, having all of those, you know, already built in, there's no learning curve. I don't have to understand that we have that tagline, right? The SEC, it just means more. I know what it means. It means a lot of things that are at the highest level of college athletics. So I don't have to have that learning curve. And it's like I'm just going from one office to the next. And when I go to the next meeting, I'll be wearing maroon instead of red and blue. And I think there's a, a big benefit for having that. And, that. and I think that's what President Young was after, is a sitting AD who understands these big time programs. All right, I believe I have a question from Kristen right behind you here. Christy, Christy I'm sorry. Hi, Christy Hi, Rieken from the Associated Press. Um, you, you mentioned in your thing in there mm -hmm. that um, you first visited here in 1998 and it really mm -hmm. piqued your interest. I wondered if you could tell us more about that and like what specifically, like, do you remember about that and what, what like still stays with you? If I remember right, I was in the press box and it was shaking. <laughs> so I thought, is that an earthquake? Is that the band? Is that the, you know, so it just, there's just a ton of passion here and, you know, the students stand up the whole game and you have the 12th man and the core and the band and you know all those things I, i'm a student of college athletics i love going on a different campus and seeing what they have to offer and when you come on this campus and i know a lot of things have changed since 1998 but you come on this campus even in 1998 you know that this place is special they care and it's big time and if the stadium is shaking you know you're at a special place. So that, that really just stayed with me. And every time I visited and coming into the SEC in 2012, A&M was coming in as well. And I thought, you know, what, what better perfect fit for the SEC than Texas A&M? So just always been super impressed with uh, this university. It still shakes a little bit. I was up there, uh, you know, last fall, and it shakes just a tad. <laughs> That's right. Suzanne? Hi, Suzanne Halliburton, Austin Hello, American Suzanne. Statesman. Um, I was going to ask you, the last two jobs you've been, I think you were the youngest AD in the country with Western Kentucky mm -hmm. and then at Ole Miss in the Power Five. What do, what do you think youth has added to what you bring to the table? Well, I think just energy. You know, energy and, and vision and, and confidence. You know, I think if you um, are confident in your ability and, and maybe you have some enthusiasm and, you know, like I said, you know, up on that on that stage is attitude and effort. So we're going to work hard, and that's going to take some energy. Again, it's not a job. It's a lifestyle, so you have to have energy to do that. And then just having a positive attitude. You know, I played Division II fullback. That's not an easy position. It's not an easy level to play at. And so to have that perspective, and then maybe you add a little bit of, of youthness to that can, I think, give you an advantage. Let's go to this side with 
Zach. Zach Taylor with WTAW. Exactly. There might be, uh, I don't know, several things, but anything that comes to mind that you feel like you've learned from at Ole Miss and something that you might either want to change or do better at Texas A&M? You know, I think any time you, you're an athletic director for, for nine years, you know, two years at Western Kentucky and seven at, at Ole Miss, uh, there's always things that you, you know, do differently. You know, sometimes the AD doesn't have to do everything. You know, at a place like Western Kentucky, the AD has to do everything. When we were building it at Ole Miss, you know, we were pretty much building a modern athletic department from scratch. I had to be involved in a lot of things. And so here, I think walking into a very healthy place, it gives me a chance to really analyze, um, allow the perspective to, to set in. And then I can say, okay, maybe we need to tweak this or, or add this. We've already said, hey, we need to add magnets on the lapel pins instead of buttons in the back. That's a little thing, right? So it'll be stuff like that. I'm kind of joking about that. But <laughs> um, we won't get that minute, trust me. But having the experience of saying, you know what, sometimes the AD needs to weigh in and sometimes they don't. And when you sit in that chair for nine years, I think you understand the balance. So that's really what I'm looking forward to is I don't have to come in and we have to add a bunch of money or we have to change this. I can really come in and just soak it all in and learn and listen. Brent. Brent Swarneman, hey, Houston Brent. Chronicle. Yes, sir. Uh, I know you've seen Kyle Field. I think we first met at Bluebell Park back in 2012. Wanted to ask your impression if you've been able to tour Reed Arena and what your impressions are of it, and, and also Bluebell as well, but partic particularly Reed. The only time I've been to Bluebell is that 2012 regional, and super impressed. Uh, we were watching uh, the games over the weekend, and I think some of the fans were traveling and you know, ball five, ball six. So I know that's a big uh, tradition at Bluebell. I have not seen Reed Arena. I haven't been to a game here. Uh, I'll tour the facilities uh, tomorrow afternoon, and you know I'll, I'll sit down with Buzz and get his thoughts and the staff and soak it. Like I said, soak it all in and listen and learn. But I haven't seen it yet, and I know that uh, it can be a good home court advantage. And our job will be to make it better. One in the back here. And then, Olin, did you have a question? Yes. Oh, okay. Somebody over here. Travis? Right here. We'll go back in the back first. Yeah. Ross Justin with KX TV here in town. Uh, obviously, football moves, moves the needle the most. Just interested to get your thoughts on uh, year one under Jimbo and obviously the trajectory of the program and uh, just where you think this is where the football program can go. Well, when you have a championship head coach, you know, not many programs have that. And so that's a great starting point. And then you throw in the recruiting base in the state of Texas. And then you throw in, like I said earlier, we're a global athletic brand and, and program. And so we can recruit nationally. You know, College Station is a destination. You throw all those things in there and you, you have the ingredients for a successful program. Now, we still have work to do. You know, we still have to build it. And you're battling against, you know, Alabama who's the, the standard bearer in our conference. But obviously Jimbo knows you know, how to do that because he's seen that working with Coach Saban. So we have the right ingredients. We have to keep recruiting. We have to keep coaching. If there's facilities that, that may need to be tweaked here and there that help propel the program from a recruiting and a branding, then we'll look at those things. So we have the ingredients. Now we just have to go to work and really get after it. So I've been really impressed with what Jimbo has done. He's made the league better. When he came into the SEC last year, it's like, OK, the league is already great. It just got better with a coach like Jimbo. So can't wait to work with him and um, continue to learn. Right. Travis. Uh, Travis. Travis Brown, the Eagle. Uh, what, I, I know you, of course, talked to President Young. And then you said you mentioned you had a phone conversation with Chancellor Sharp. What has the uh, initial relationship been like with those two gentlemen? And how do you kind of see that working relationship uh, jumping right in? It's been great. You know. President Young hired me. You know, I'm going to re be reporting to him and be part of his cabinet and really just be part of the institution. And then if we can help the system, because athletics is this big vehicle, right, and it's a big marketing, you know, platform, if we can help the system grow, then we're, we're going to be a part of that. So it's been a great positive relationship. You know, I, I don't know Chancellor Sharp all that well. I'm going to have lunch with him tomorrow, and I think that'll be a, a healthy conversation to learn more about how does the system and the campuses all work together? So very, very positive and uh, just ready to learn and work with them both uh, together. 
let's do a final two, and then he'll start to walk around and get him in small groups, and uh, we'll go down here. Olin? Somebody. Yeah, Ross, Olin Buchanan with yes, Tex Ags. Um, that's not understanding. I think it's not until next month that you really get started, and then you got a lot mm -hmm. of things to get your feet wet and all those things. Right. But uh, my question is, how quickly do you feel like you have to – that, that you'll start evaluating uh, the various programs and decide what changes need or do not need to be made. And on to that, having a background in the SEC, how much does that help you to get kind of a head start on, on that evaluation process? Well, I, I told RC, he's still the athletic director. So, you know, I can't, I can't work two jobs. You know, I can't be here yet. Uh, I'm still helping Ole Miss transition. I'll go back there later this week and help them with some transition items. We have our athletic director conference in Orlando next week, so I'll be there. I've got some presentations, part of some panels. Go back to Ole Miss, help them for a few days. And so, you know, I, I think it, it can be pretty hard. To, I'm not here. You know, I haven't been here the last year to understand what conversations have taken place. I haven't been here since RC has taken over to understand – hey, is there things that they've evaluated that they're ready to make a decision on? And maybe they just bring a recommendation to me. I don't know all those things yet. So I don't want to be too pushy. I think, again, my job is going to be learn and listen. If there's something immediate and the staff and RC bring that to me, then I can help make that decision and advise. But until July 8th, I'm not the athletic director. RC is, and so my job will be to help and support and any way that I can. I hope to come over here maybe mid-June for a few days and, again, just continue to meet people. So we'll, we'll talk about that, but then really get cranked up on July the 8th. Okay. We're going to go with the last one with Ben. Hey, Ross. Hey, whatever, hey, um, whenever you were looking at um, this job and, and going through the process, what was the most exciting thing, you know, about the possibility of being the athletic director at a and Well, there's a lot of things that go into it. You know, one, you know, your family. You know, I think the opportunities in the state of Texas, you know, for our boys, for education, for sports, for just life, I think was uh, really exciting. Um, I've always just been impressed with Texas and how people live and the infrastructure. And so that was, that was very, very important. Um, and then just quality of life. We love college towns. And so Los Angeles was cool and Miami was fun, but we're college town people. And so we were not going to leave for anywhere that was – an unbelievable place, a top five program, a great college town. So you just package all that together and it just is a perfect fit for us. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will now, uh, Ross will make the rounds before we go. Ross, you mentioned that you have one year of eligibility left. I think that President Young mentioned as a fullback, is Jimbo talking yeah. to all or does he care about well, your talent? You know, I, well, I spent uh, seven years at Ole Miss with uh, spread offenses. Yes. No fullbacks. And I couldn't convince the head coaches there to no room a fullback. For you, Jimbo said he's got a fullback, so I see. I'm all in. Yeah, that's right. Let's go. Dream, dreams can come true that's in right. College Station for sure. All right, we're going to allow uh, uh, Ross just to take a little few minutes with you. We have another meeting to get to in just a few minutes, and so we'll start to round him up later. But Ross, uh, just make your way around, guys. If you want to 